Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking magic trail particle effect using Adobe After Effects and Particular. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels would be fine, 30 FPS and a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. Just press OK. Once we have that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a new solid and we're just going to call this Particular. And it doesn't matter about the color because what we're going to do is we're going to search for the effect called Particular. Now Particular is a paid plugin from Red Giant. So if you do not have it, please make sure that you go and download it before attempting this tutorial. So now once we have Particular, what we need to do is we need to open up the designer settings over here. And so what we can do, the first thing that we can do is we can um, just click on the settings over here and make sure that we're using the GPU uh, acceleration. That will make it a little bit faster. And now once we have that, now what we can do is we can go into the presets and have a look at some of these presets. Like, you know, look at that. That's if you need some kind of magical particle effect, like that's pretty much done already. So there are heaps of different effects that you can have a look at and they're all here in the presets, you know, so you can just click on them and you can have a look at how they actually look. So the one that I want to use is this mystic one. And so it's got a nice, you know, kind of uh, chunky uh, kind of effect that goes on with it. And then it kind of, you know, looks like a flame pretty much. So I'm going to be working with that. Then what I need to do once I've picked the preset, I need to go down here to the primary system. And if I click on the emitter type, I need to change all of these emitter types to light. Now, yes, you can do this inside the actual After Effects if you want, but since we're here, we can just change them here um, just so it simplifies the tasks uh, later on. So if you have six systems in here, make sure that you change all of them to lights. So now once we've done that, what we need to do is we just need to click apply. And then what we are going to do is we are going to create a new light and we are going to call this emitter. Now make sure that you spell this correctly and it looks exactly like that. Press OK. So now we've added the light. What I need to do now is I need to get the pen tool and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and hold and draw a line out this way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and hold and do the same thing for the other side. Make sure that when you click and hold and drag, you're going in that direction. So you create that curve. And then we're going to do the same thing for this side. So I'm going to click and drag and then I'm going to do the same thing here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to link it up together. Now, yes, it's not perfect. So what we can do is we can grab the selection tool and we can just move them around slightly. And if you need to increase um, any of these things, you know, you can. So maybe something like that. And then I'll just rotate that and maybe put that one just down there. And then I'll just fix up this one as best as I can. So now once we have that, now what we need to do is we need to copy that and put it onto our emitter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the shape layer. I'm going to open up the contents, go to the path, click on the path, and then I'm just going to press Command C to copy, or you can go to edit copy. And then you can go to the emitter. You can press P for position. Make sure you click on the position and then press Command V to paste. And now if you've done that correctly, now you will have the particular going through that entire loop that we have there. So now you can see it's following that and I think that's looking pretty cool. And so what we can do now is we can adjust the speed. So if you want it to go faster or slower, you can highlight all those keyframes and then just hold uh, option on your Mac or Alt on your Windows machine and you can drag it out. So for example, that's three seconds now. And now you have that particular going around and I think that's looking pretty cool. So now while we're here, what we're going to do is we're just going to make it loop out to the end. So I'm going to hold option. I'm going to click on that stopwatch and I'm going to write loop out. And if you've done that correctly and you press tab, now you will see that once we pass that three second mark, that animation will keep on going. So it will keep on going right until the end. So that's looking pretty cool. 
So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into particular and we're just gonna change things up a bit. So I'm gonna go back into my systems, make sure that I'm on the primary system and now I can change some of these things. For example, the particles per second, I can maybe even drop that down to let's say 200. Um, I can change the emitter size. I can bring that up to about 200 and you will see here as it updates, you will see what's actually happening. So it doesn't have a point now and now it's uh, like more of a kind of a blob kind of thing. But I mean like look, you know, you, you can bring this up to however much you want and it will change the actual streak that you have. So totally up to you what you want to do. Um, you can also change some of the other things in here like velocity and things like that. Uh, you can also change the life of the particle and bring that down. So maybe I'll bring this down to 0.4 seconds. And you can see what's happened here. So now that main particle doesn't live for as long. And so it's a much shorter particle system. So I don't mind that, that's pretty cool. The other thing I wanna do is change the color. So in the particle settings, I'm just gonna change the color. So I'm going to use color hunt here and I'm just going to pick this color down here and I'm just going to click on this and then paste it in there. Now you can go through every other one of your systems and change the colors accordingly but I'm just going to keep it on that main color over there. And other things that we can do in here, you know, you can change some of the other things like uh, spin or spin amplitude. You can put a bit of twist on there, um, kaleidoscope. There's heaps of stuff to explore in here, but we're not gonna do any of that other stuff. So the next thing that we need to do is we're just gonna create a background for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another new solid. I'm gonna call it BG. I'm gonna drop it to the bottom of my uh, composition. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for the effect called gradient ramp. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to color hunt and I'm gonna choose the colors that I have here. So I'm gonna choose this uh, darker red color and I'm gonna put that back into my clip over there. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it to a radial ramp and I'm just gonna swap the colors. And now I've got this cool kind of, um, it's like a radial gradient happening over there. And I'm just gonna move around this, uh, this point over here. So maybe I'll have something like that and maybe I'll move the black one just a bit lower, something like that. So that's looking pretty cool. So now the final thing that we need to do is we just need to add a bit of noise. So we're gonna add an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna right click add a new adjustment layer, put this on the top. Actually, we don't even need the shape layer so we can actually get rid of that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for the effect called noise. And I'm just gonna bump that up to about 8%. You can bump it up to whatever you like. Um, and that will just tie it all together. And then the final thing that we can do is we can go back to our particular and we can add some glow. Now, if you have deep glow, deep glow works really well in here, but if you do not have deep glow, what we can use is just glow. So I'm just gonna bring the intensity down to about 0.4. I'm gonna maybe bump up the radius to about uh, 20 and I'm gonna bring down the threshold to about 30. And if you want, you can always duplicate that again. So now I've got two glows on there and I can bring this one back up to, let's say about 60. And maybe I'll drop down the intensity to, let's say 0.2. So now you've got this cool kind of nice color that goes on it. And now we've created this uh, magic particle trail effect. Now this uh, effect is pretty heavy on the CPU. So you need to have a half decent computer to play this back because I'm doing it even in quarter and it's still struggling a little bit. But once you render it, it should all be fairly good. So anyways, that's it for this quick tutorial on how to create an infinity magic trail particle effect. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.